welcome you all with Election Unlocked, our special show which right through this election season has been bringing you all that's been happening around the election battleground. As the elections draw to a close, verdict day draws to a close, we'll bring you all the fascinating characters who've dotted the election landscape. But first, as always, it's time for the headlines. After a BJP sweep in three states, suspense goes over Khan Banega, Chief Minister. Rajasthan BJP leaders meet Amit Shah in Delhi, but Vasundha Raja stays back in Jaipur with 20 of her MLAs. A Telangana Chief Minister announcement likely soon. DK Shiv Kumar of the Congress heads to Delhi after meeting with the newly elected MLAs. Revan Reddy remains the front runner. He will present the choice to Malikarjun Kharge, Rahul Gandhi. The Zoram People's Movement sweeps the Mizoram polls. Zoram Thanga resigns as Chief Minister. Lal Duoma set to become the next Chief Minister of the state. He's a former IPS officer. Standing ovation for Prime Minister Modi in Parliament after a 3-1 sweep by the BJP in the Hindi heartland. Prime Minister sends out a big message to opposition MPs, says don't rent your frustration of loss inside Parliament. In the day after Congress is drubbing in the three assembly elections, India bloc allies blame the Congress for poor showing Mamta Banerjee to skip the Team India meeting on 6 December. Now, one of the fascinating things about democracy and elections in this country is it throws up a varied number of figures. This election season has been no different. We've seen a former IPS officer now set to become the chief minister of Mizoram, a former professor, another a former Navy officer. They are the game changers of the Mizoram election, powered by youth like a social media influencer. Today was the day when the Zoram People's Movement storm has hit the truly, the, the tiny state in India, Mizoram, scripting history. How did this all happen? How did a party like the Zoram People's Movement, a coalition of six smaller parties, come together and take on the ruling Mizo National Front and the once dominant Congress? Our top story is from Anupam Mishra from Mizoram. Lal Duhoma has been part of Mizoram's political map since the mid-1980s. A former IPS officer who resigned from service after his glorious crackdown on the Goa drug racket at the behest of the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi and became catalyst peacemaker between Indian government and Mizo National Front insurgency led by Lal Denga. He joined Congress and became an MP in 1984. But after Indira Gandhi's assassination, he was unhappy with the progress of peace talks and left Congress. I used to be there with the then Prime Minister, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, day in and day out for a couple of years. And we are very close to each other. And uh, she requested me to, res to resign and help her in negotiating with the rebel leader, Mr. Laldena. And that is the way I joined the politics. <laughs> in 1988, Lal Duhoma ended up becoming the first MP to be disqualified under the anti-defection law after he resigned from the Congress. But that wasn't the last time. In the last state assembly election in 2018, Lal Duhoma's current political party Zoram People's Movement was still not recognized and he fought as an independent candidate. A year later, when ZPM was officially recognized, they had eight MLAs and Lal Duhoma became the opposition leader. He was disqualified as an MLA on anti-defection law and in 2021, he came back to Mizo Assembly after winning in the by-election. Now he is poised to become the Chief Minister of Mizoram. 
After that, uh, we'll have a meeting with our elders' council. We are going to form a ministry with them. It's not me alone who can, you know, form a government. According to our constitution, it has to be decided by the chief minister, along with the advice of the members of the VUC. The movement started by Lal Duhoma's ZPM is being compared with the Ahmadmi Party. This time, there are people from different walks of life who have emerged winners in the electoral battle. Most of them are young, vibrant faces waiting to change and develop their state. Forty-five-year-old Van Lal Klana is a commerce professor. In 2018, like Lal Duhoma, he too contested as an independent and won from Aizawal North. This time too, he has retained his seat. We will uh, show what is ZPM about, what change we are about to bring. We have been uh, like uh, showing the people, we have been telling the people that if you put us in power, we will tackle corruption, we will use better system in governance. So the people will know what ZPM is all about. TBC Lal Venchunga is a former Navy officer. This 41-year-old now hopes to be part of change in Mizoram under ZPM flag. Young voters, especially first-time voters, they have said that our current scenario, our current scene, the nepotism, the politics, the corruption, the brastachari, all of these things are fed up. They need a different system. They have been removed from the alternative party. So, it's not the winning of the ZPM party. This is the public win. 32-year-old Barrel Vanahansangi is a social media influencer, a radio jockey and digital show presenter. After being a corporator for two years, now she is the youngest female MLA on ZPM ticket in Mizoram Assembly. I kind of think it for my, to, to myself that I can't just, you know, correct some people from the media alone. So I have to step inside. And then I also encourage myself and then uh, check the pulse of the people, whether uh, we're going to be, you know, like we're going to be able to make changes or not. And then fortunately, I received an invitation to be the uh, candidate for the AMC, the Municipal Corporation. Then I go for it because I said to myself, then I also I believe that if I do not take a new step, then there cannot be a new success. It's a vibrant young brigade that Lal Dohuma is going to lead. They want change and they are the change makers today in Majoram. After decades of MNF rule, ZPM is ready to take on the mantle. And in next five years, they will have to live up to the faith that Majoram people have invested upon them. With camera person Prabir Biswas, this is Anpam Mishra for India Today in Aizol. Now, every election throws up big upsets. One of those upsets was in Telangana, where Kamareddi turned out to be the most intense battle. This was a seat which was being contested both by the incumbent Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao and his big rival Revant Reddy. But guess what? It was a third candidate, K. Venkat Ramana Reddy of the BJP, who defeated them both in Kamareddi. Take a look at how Venkat Reddy has emerged as one of the big winners in Telangana. I am looking at the TRS candidate and the Congress candidate. 101% in 1900, 101% from the beginning. Confident in his words, the 53-year-old BJP leader pulled it through with aplomb. K. Venkata Ramana Reddy of the BJP emerged victorious in Telangana's prestigious Kama Reddy constituency. Defeating the outgoing Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao and the CM in waiting, Ravant Reddy of Congress, although KCR won Gajwel and Ravant Reddy secured the Kodangal Assembly seat. However, K. Venkata Ramana Reddy's triumph in Kama Reddy labelled him as the BJP's giant slayer in Telangana. A businessman turned politician with declared assets exceeding 49 crore rupees. He joined the BJP in 2018. 
K. Venkata Ramana Reddy entered politics as a Congress member of the Mandal Parishad Territorial Council during the YS Rajashekhara Reddy government in 2004. Subsequently, he became a Zilla Parishad Territorial Council member and served as Zilla Parishad chairperson. K. Venkata Ramana Reddy parted ways with Congress following YSR's death. In 2023, he defeated his nearest rival, the powerful KCR with a margin of more than 6,700 votes in Kama Reddy. Bureau Report, India Today. Okay, let's turn from Telangana to Rajasthan. Well, remember the BJP played the game of religious polarization on the ground in some areas, this time by fielding three members of the Sadhu Sant Samaj and also the first cow minister of the country. All three Mahants and the former cow ministers have secured wins in their respective constituencies. It's worth noting this time, the BJP did not field any Muslim candidate in Rajasthan. Take a look at the story. Mahant Balaknath Yogi secured a victory for BJP in Alwar's district, Tijara constituency. During his campaign trail, he hit the headlines repeatedly for his anti-minority statements. He is the Chancellor of Baba Mastnath University, an eighth Mahant of the Nath sect of Hinduism. The Mahant is an MP and right now in fray for CM race in Rajasthan after his win over Congress candidate Imran Khan. Seva Raigi Seva. और जी जान से तन मन से धन से सेवा रहेगी जनता की संपूर्ण सुरक्षा विकास और प्रशासनिक व्यवस्था इन तीनों क्षेत्रों में तिजारा की जनता की बहुत अच्छे से सेवा होने वाली है बीजेपी कैंडिडेट एंड हेड प्रीस्ट ऑफ हतोज धाम बाल मुकुंद आचार्य वन फ्रॉम द हवा महल कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी इन जयपुर विद इन आवर्स ऑफ हिज विन ही हैज इशूड स्टेटमेंट थ्रेटनिंग टू शट ऑल नॉन वेजिटेरियन ईटरीज इन जयपुर नाम जयपुर का अप्रकाशी है और यहाँ पर आप जयपुर में भ्रमण करेंगे तो एक घर एक मंदिर यानी या मंदिर ज्यादा है घर कम है और पूरा शहर जो है मंदिर ही मंदिर है आमेर से लेके जयपुर तक जब मैं जन संपर्क में रोज जाता था तो माताएं बहने मुझे एक शिकायत करती थी कि हम गोविंद जी के जाते हैं रस्ते में इतनी सारी नॉनवेज की दुकान कुत्ते में काट जाते हैं नॉनवेज रोड पे पड़ा रहता है हमारे कपड़ों पे अड़ता है पाओ पे आता है ये वो फलाना तो ये जो गंदा माहौल है जो यहाँ की फोटो जो टूरिस्ट के माध्यम से बाहर जा रही है जो यहाँ की छवि खराब कर रही है अपराकाशी का मान सम्मान नाम गौरव खत्म हो रहा है हम तो सिर्फ उसको ठीक करने के लिए यहाँ निवेदन किए इन द न्यूक्लियर टाउन ऑफ पोखरण बीजेपी महंत प्रताप पुरी सिक्योर्ड अ विक्ट्री डिफीटिंग कांग्रेस मिनिस्टर एस मोहम्मद ही इज द करंट हेड ऑफ द तारा तारा मठ ऑफ बारमेर हिज सपोर्टर्स कंपेयर हिम to Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath. He is also known as the Yogi of Barmer. Okan mein Rajasthan mein aur pure desh mein Bhagwan Kamal hi dikh raha hai sabko aur isliye main badhai aur dhanyawad deta hu ki Modi ji ke netritva mein Bharat jo vikas kar raha hai aur vishva ki maa shakti ban raha hai usme Rajasthan mein bhi apna yogdan diya hai Rajasthan aur Okan aur Jaisalmer ki janta ko vishesh karke hamare kshetra ki sari janta ko main dhanyawad deta hu. Otaram Devasi was the first cow minister of the country in Vasundhra Rajay's last cabinet. For the third time, Otaram has secured his MLA seat from Sirohi with a significant margin of 35,805 votes. He is a former cop of the state police force and comes from the pastoral ethnic community of Devasi. Over the years, the 59-year-old Otaram has emerged as their prominent leader. हमारा लक्ष्य रहता है कि पशुपालन को बढ़ावा मिले और जिस तरह का पशुपालन का व्यवसाय है उसको किस तरह से पशुपालक को जोड़ा जाए किसान को जोड़ा जाए एग्रीकल्चर के लिए हो या पशुपालन के लिए क्योंकि यहाँ का सबसे पहले अगर राजस्थान देखना जाए तो पशुपालन और एग्रीकल्चर ही मूल है तो उसको सबसे बड़ा बढ़ावा देना हमारा सबका कर्तव्य है डेजर्ट स्टेट इज एविडेंटली पावर्ड बाई स्ट्रॉन्ग हिंदू रिलीजियस रिप्रेजेंटेशन इन द लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली Bureau report India today Now 22 lakh 20000 first time voters cast their mandate this time in the Rajasthan assembly elections 
No surprise there as young faces are emerging as winners even in prominent constituencies. Many of them defeated established candidates. Today we bring you the story of two such young MLAs from Rajasthan that are giving hope for a generational change. Born into Dalit family in Haryana, Spema Khera, Noksham Chaudhary is a famous designer by profession. But she is in the headlines these days because she is one of the 20 women candidates who have won as an MLA in the Rajasthan Assembly election this time. I would like to thank all my voters who have dedicatedly and generously voted for me and all the supporters from Kama Vidhan Sabha. This is an incredible win which has been dedicated to each one of you. I would also would want to thank BJP workers who have worked thoroughly day and night, burnt midnight oil to make this win a national win. From South Delhi's famous college Miranda House to Kaman via Milan, it's been a fascinating journey for Noksham Chaudhary. This 30-year-old created a stir in Rajasthan's Bharatpur district with her more than 20,000 vote win after ditching the world of glitz and glamour for the hurly-burly of politics. जब मैंने अपना पहला चुनाव लड़ा था तो मेरी सत्ताईस सत्ताईस साल की उम्र थी साढ़े तीन चार साल के अंदर मैं अपना दूसरा चुनाव लड़ने जा रही हूँ तो शिक्षा महिलाओं की सुरक्षा और ये भ्रष्टाचार हटाना कांग्रेस का जो भ्रष्ट शासन है इसको हटाना और ये सब हमारे मुद्दे in Barmey's Shio constituency, 26-year-old Ravinder Bhati contested as an independent candidate. He defeated another independent candidate, Fateh Khan, with a margin of 3,950 votes. I want to give the vote of the people of the world, and in the past, the vote of the people of पूरी जनता ने भरोसा जताया और उसको निर्दली के रूप में जिता के सदन तक पहुंचाया तो मैं इसका श्रेय भी जनता को और मेरे कार्यकर्ताओं को देना चाहूंगा रविंदर भाटी वाज अ स्टूडेंट लीडर ऑफ एवीबीपी एंड हैज जॉइन द बीजेपी अर्लियर राइट बिफोर द इलेक्शंस व्हेन द पार्टी गेव द टिकट टू स्वरूप सिंह ही रेबल्ड एंड कंटेस्टेड एज एन इंडिपेंडेंट कैंडिडेट जब किसी का टिकट कटता है तो एक दिन उस आदमी को संभलते लग जाता है मेरे लिए यह दौर पहला दौर था और मेरे जो भी शुभचिंतक थे मैंने उनसे बात की छत्तीस कौम के जो साथी थे जो मेरे साथ में लगे थे मैंने उनसे कहा कि अब भैया टिकट नहीं है क्या करना चाहिए तो उनका कहना था कि आप मजबूती से चुनाव लड़ो हम सब साथ में और मजबूती से अपन चुनाव लड़के जीत के निकालेंगे तमाम जितने भी प्रतिनिधि थे जो जो उम्मीदवार थे जो मेरे साथ में चुनाव लड़े हम जो नौ लोग थे मेरे समेत मैं सबको बधाई देना चाहूँगा कि मजबूती से आप लोगों ने चुनाव लड़ा both Noksham Chaudhary and Ravinder Bhati are determined to work for the aspirations of the youth of Rajasthan, plagued by paper leak scams and unemployment. Let me also bring you today the story of Ishwar Sahu. He is a common man who lost his son in communal clashes in Chhattisgarh. Sahu fought the election on a BJP ticket and he defeated seven-term Congress MLA and former minister Ravindra Chaube. Ishwar says he's not here to seek revenge, but to work for the people of Saja constituency. Take a look at this special report. Twenty-three-year-old Bhuvneshwar Sahu was killed in communal clashes in Biranpur village in Bhemtara district in April this year. The clashes between Hindus and Muslims had erupted over a fight between two children. Eight months later, Bhuvneshwar's father, Ishwar Sahu, an ordinary villager with no political background, has caused the biggest upset in the Chhattisgarh Assembly elections. Ishwar Sahu, who fought on a BJP ticket, defeated seven-term Congress MLA and former Minister Ravindra Chaube from the Saja constituency by more than 5,000 votes. Our Chhatra ke Ravindra Chaube, la harana jaruri samjis jo bola harais aur khud ke jo khud ke apn jit tayar kari jiti khud ke vidhayak bani to khud jiti se. A 
after the communal clashes in April, the BJP had accused the Bhupesh Bhagel government of siding with the culprits. Ishwar assures his voters he is not here to seek revenge. बदले की राजनीतिक नहीं करेंगे हम जो हमारे केंद्र सरकार की योजना है हमारी भारतीय जनता पार्टी के जो घोषणा पत्र में जितना भी योजना है और हम ये चुनाव प्रचार में हम पूरे हमारे साझा विधानसभा क्षेत्र के 290 गांव में गए हम एक एक जनता की समस्या से वाकिफ है हमने अपनी आंखों से देखा है हम पूरी अपने जिम्मेदारी के साथ हर जनता के समस्या का समाधान करने की पूरी कोशिश करेंगे Sahu described his election as the victory of justice over injustice. With Sumi Rajapan in Chhattisgarh, Bureau Report, India Today. As I said, we brought you a fascinating range of election winners in this country that perhaps give you hope that democracy remains alive and kicking. That's it that we have on all that we have on the elections unlocked. Stay tuned to India Today for all the news updates. Thanks for watching. Stay well, stay safe. Jai Hind. Namaskar.